Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, so today, uh, yeah, yeah, and so this is the very last session of OSSJ. Uh, and, and I know folks are tired, but please give me 40 more minutes. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so thank you, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and today, so I'd like to talk about uh, so so end-to-end -end observability for connected vehicle services, including 5G cellular network U-plane travels. And I'm Masanori Ito from Toyota Motor Corporation, and my co-speaker is. Hello, I am Kota Endo from KDI Corporation. Thank you for joining this session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and today's my talk is composed uh, is composed like this. So at first, so I so I share the overall background and also so our challenges and also motivation. And then, uh, so I uh, so I will explain so our re related works and also former works. Uh, but this is a little bit too much. So so I will spend roughly roughly two so twenty minutes or so, so until here. And then, uh, uh, and I state uh, so the problem. Uh, uh, so I define the program statement and, uh, and explain what we did this time for the POC, okay. At first, uh, background. Nowadays, so in the automotive industry, uh, the trend is called CASE, C-A-S-E. C stands for connected and A stands for autonomous. And S, so S can be twofold. One is shared and the other is service and then electric, okay? And, <coughs> and regarding data, so we have to handle so uh, data from vehicles, uh, for example, sensor data, so-called CAN, and also camera data, and also, and, the data, and how we process the data, real time, so depending on the data, or use case, real time, or batch processing, or so. And the sy and overall system architecture, so server-side architecture is, so simply speaking, hybrid cloud. And the connectivity is, is various. But mainly, so today, I'm focusing on the cellular network, not Wi-Fi, but with X or so. And, uh, yeah, in the bottom half, so I, so I put the so overall diagram. And I think, so most of you are, a feeling that so Toyota guys would working on mainly on the vehicle side, left so bottom left side only. But actually, what doing is not only just vehicle side and also center center side, but also network side too. Yeah, okay. And here, challenges and motivations, and 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 as I stated right now, so. So far as the vehicle side or the center side, we can address issues or troubles by ourselves. But on the network troubles, there are not so many things we can do. And while so we are so uh, so during the troubles, we we receive lots of customer complaint calls, and and it's a, a little bit hard and painful work. And here is the motivation: if we can work with. Uh, Network service providers, MNOs, like KDDI folks, we can do additional things. Okay, so this is a primary high level motivation. Okay. And the next, requ so requirements from our side, connected vehicle services side. Simply speaking, so although I uh, listed up uh, <coughs> many requirements items, but so simply, this, these can be summarized as five A, uh, five, hmm? five W one H, where, where, which, and what, and who or when happened. But as I explain later, actually, uh, what we want to know uh, actually is which vehicle were affected on the network failure, and uh, later I will focus on. Uh, the reason and also what I did, uh, what we did for the, the POC. And as I stated, so we are working with so broad area, technology area. So that's why, uh, and also it's almost impossible to resolve everything only by ourselves. So that's why we are doing, so we are carrying out various collaborations, including open collaboration or partner collaboration, like, so, like this case, with the collaboration with KDDI folks. And also, of course, open source things, apps. Okay. <coughs> and among the, 
Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and I so we walk, walk through uh, so picking up so three so three activities among these ones, and one and the first one is ACC. This is actually related work, not formal work. ACC stands for Automotive Edge Computing Consortium, and this so at this organization, uh, we are promoting edge computing use cases, focusing on automotive use case and not just not just publishing documentation but we are carrying out uh, P, so several POCs and do please have a look at the website of ACC there are several interesting POC result okay and the next one is is a partner collaboration and please so I want to let them know let them know that yeah that uh, I am interested in 5G network automation and optimization. For example, end-to-end uh, -end network slice management. To realize it, observability is an important role. Okay, uh, open telemetry have strong points of correlating telemetry, such as logs, metrics, classes, and so on. In last month's uh, CubeCon, we instrument uh, control plan of five G system by open telemetry and utilize UE utilize uh, UE identifier and vehicle ID to uh, to take correction for analysis with UE granularity. Okay. Uh, for, uh, please check the link for more detail. Okay. So. Today, this session should be useful for user plan observability. Okay, so, okay, briefly, uh, uh, I'll hand it over to Ms. Saito. Thank you very much, Endo san. And uh, in, in, the in the third line, difference, uh, so that is the URL uh, where the so Endo san so Endo -san session. And, uh, and there, so you can download so Endo San's presentation and also recorded video. So do please have a look at them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's very good present uh, so summary and also presentation. Okay. And so far, right now, so uh, so far, uh, so I explained so a bit overall activity at ACC and also the 5G C plane things. Okay, activity and uh, others. So as a connected vehicle service provider, we are also doing the application layer observability too. And this is former works too, so number two, okay. <laughs> and uh, my focus point is, uh, is later, a little bit. Please wait a little bit. <laughs> and, and this is, a, uh, <coughs> and, and this is an overview of a PO, of a PO system uh, for the connected vehicle services. As you can see, as you can see, <coughs> so I, uh, so I uh, so, uh, so on the on premise so on premise side so on premise side so I put uh, so two syst so two systems. This image is to so in Japan, Tokyo, and Osaka, and, and like that. And as you can see, uh, the left upper side, uh, sued vehicle, sued vehicle, and also the traffic generated there uh, would go through the. Uh, Mobile, so 5G mobile networks through the edge location of Tokyo and Osaka, and also, and finally, uh, reaches to the public side application system. Okay. <laughs> and this and this overall thing is very complicated, right? And, and don't worry. So I so I don't walk through everything. <laughs> and what I like to share is the red dust line. So a part of the of the POC system, and this is the so simple. So as you can see, uh, are, uh, <coughs> mm? uh, so as you, so, so as you can see around there. Uh, so actually, this is uh, <coughs> uh, a camera data processing system for the object detection. Uh, okay, like this. <laughs> and if I so if I break down these red dust boxes into so, so into functional boxes. The system is like this. From the left, from the left side, there is a, uh, so a vehicle traffic generator, and 
Uh, yeah, and so at the front end, and front end subsystem, uh, so MTL process will be done. And also then finally, uh, the data uh, would, would put into the pipeline, so uh, object detection process pipeline like this. And here, do please note that, so this is just functional box and actual, de so in case of actual, so actual deployment, so there are multiple so Kubernetes pot and also in, so even in one pot, there are normally multiple, multiple containers. So in short, and in addition, they are running distributed manner across multiple availability zones or so. And here the point is, even for this simple, so even for this simple, uh, simple service, monitoring is not so easy always. This is the point. And, and then what is a resolution? Distributed tracing. And, we, and this time uh, we, used, uh, we used open telemetry. And here I'd like to share uh, so, so some key points of the open telemetry. And, and yeah, regarding the conceptual component, there are so not so many ones. So application itself and the so trace data collector and also aggregator. And there is a, it, it is a pipeline of the data propagation. And here, one more point, data flow. I think, so, so, uh, so I wrote north-south traffic. This is just, so reporting, uh, so, uh, reporting trace span data from application to the aggregator. This is normal, I think. But in case of distributed tracing, we have to take uh, one more traffic. So, uh, so, so, I, so I note here east-west traffic. And this is the, <coughs> and, yeah, and this is required uh, to, uh, for applications uh, to, so to, hmm? So to let the query know who is the caller, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, and otherwise, if we don't this context, uh, and this is called context propagation. And if we don't have context propagation, and and this is an example of the distributed tracing of of that application data. Uh, so, uh, so I explained <laughs> like this. Like this now, uh, so we can so we can see the application call flow like this, like Gantt chart, and also so one, so one span is connected uh, is connected like the, the executed order like this. And here the <coughs> context propagation is required for the call side, uh, so in order to in order to uh, yeah, chain the spans like this. Okay, and also some more, <coughs> and, yeah, and, yeah, and some more pra practical design point is, so we have applications, okay, and in order to, uh, so, so in order to output this, so this kind of trace data, we ha so we have to add some processing, okay. And in case of us, in case of us, at first, uh, we, we modified our applications by using open telemetry SDK. But there is, but this way is not always uh, preferred, right? <laughs> so, so that's why there is a so-called so automatic instrumentation. And this is like a uh, debugger, debugger or profiler, what, do, what, do, what those kind of things. And enabling, so, enabling, so capturing some process and exporting trace data and also adding the context propagation necessary data to the next query. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> mm. Mm. And, yeah, and, and here, ah, yeah, and here, so this, so, so as I explained, this is an example of the distributed tracing data result. Uh, of our application, this one, okay, and and not only just so visualize visualize how the the, the overall uh, so application worked. So we are working on so anomaly detection or anomaly prediction uh, based on the uh, based on the observability data, including this this kind of uh, distributed 
tracing and metrics and logs. And this result uh, would, uh, would appear somewhere in, in, mm, in next year. <laughs> okay. Maybe some academic conference. And so far, so I walked through our related works and also former works. And from here, uh, so I will focus in on the POC of this time, okay, the U-plane observability. Okay. And let's recap the, the, the requirement. Uh, problems to be addressed is like this. So, so application layer troubles are okay, but need to address network troubles, including U-plane. And here, I think so. We can assume two things: network service, so MNO, so MNO, network service provider people does health monitoring of C plane and U plane network functions. So it's obvious, right? <laughs> and also our side, user side, our side, connected big service side nodes, uh, identifier of UE, ah, here UE means user equipment, and simply speaking, it's like smartphone. And also, in, so in the world of the connected vehicles, so one, one vehicle normally, normally has uh, so data communication module like smartphone, okay? And here, uh, so, so of course, we know the identifier of the, the onboard uh, communication device and also, so each vehicle's current location, and also route plan. For example, destination or schedule or, or current status. So how fast is it driving or which direction the, ve uh, the vehicle is driving or so, okay? And so here, a bit uh, drill down motivation and also the reason why we want to do that. So if we can get so U plane travel information with U so UE, I mean the smartphone or data communication module uh, granularity earlier, okay. So here is the point earlier. We can take proactive actions. For example, sending, receiving necessary information to the vehicle uh, from <laughs> or uh, to the uh, so information or command uh, to the vehicle in prior. Okay, okay. For example, and also even if it's difficult to forecast failure uh, or troubles itself, normally failure locations and vehicle locations is, uh, is apart. So that's why <laughs> uh, we can predict, so we can predict a vehicle could, uh, could, driving, uh, could be driving into the very place uh, where the network trouble is happening. So like this way, we can take actions proactively. So that's why we want to know the, the UE granularity uh, information uh, that are affected by some U network side U-plane trouble. And here, some important point is, so, so on the contrary, so, so I said identifier, uh, but what about the location or so in terms of the, in terms of the tracking area or cell ID or so, but as I stated, we already know uh, uh, through the connected vehicle service. So that's why identification, so identifier information is, is the most important one. And also, so, so, it's, so, it's, so it's sufficient. This is the point. Okay. And here, uh, before diving, so before diving into the, the, the POC that we carried out this time, so, uh, so 5G network you plan quick overview and regarding the details and, yeah, and also the uh, details of the 5G things, uh, cellular network things, do please have a, so again, do please have a look at so Endosan slide. So, so Endosan gave us very, so very good <laughs> summary of the five, of, of the cellular network things. Okay. And here, <laughs> so, uh, so in, so here, the point, so I, so I have mainly two points. So actually in the 3GPP, 3GPP 5G network world, there are many network functions are defined. And, and here this time, so I would refer, so SM, SMF, SMF stands for session management function, if I remember correctly, and also UPF, and that's all. So 
regarding other regarding other network functions, you don't need to care about uh, the, uh, so at least for my presentation. Okay. This is the first point. And the second point, <laughs> until our smartphone are uh, online, and also uh, so uh, so we can so we can we can generate uh, so we can generate traffic and communicate with a remote site. There are two phases. One needs UE user equipment registration, and, and this is mostly in, uh, done in C plane. And and Endosan's work is actually focusing on this, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, this phase. Okay. <laughs> and the second phase is P so called PDU session establishment, and and at this stage, so IP so IP addresses would be assigned to each smartphone or a data communication module, and then, and then, mm, yeah, ah, uh, yeah, so, so, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, remote communication uh, would be enabled, okay. And so at this stage, what we have to do is get list of PDU sessions. So list of, ah, uh, mm? uh, sorry, mm, so, uh, yeah, get list, uh, so get list of PDU sessions per UPF or uh, G node. Uh, so here I mean that the, the network functions are that got troubles basis. And also, uh, and also extract affected our own identifier. So SUP and MZ uh, is so 5G or 4G, uh, so user equipment, user equipment identifier term. And simply speaking, uh, uh, roughly speaking, it's a phone number, okay. <laughs> I extract from them. And so in order to do this, so I so initially I got two ideas. And one needs, uh, so simply speak, using REST API from the network functions of, of defined in the 5G, uh, 3GPP, 3GPP spec. And the second idea is, uh, if it doesn't work, <laughs> The second idea is use open telemetry, uh, so automatic instrumentation. And, and regarding the, uh, and the regarding implementation of the tracer, so I have two choices. Uh, one is from the so open telemetry upstream community, and the other is Grafana Labs beta. And, uh, and the reason, uh, and the reason uh, why I chose uh, so, so automatic instrumentation is, so I thought it's better uh, to, ke uh, so to keep the existing uh, network function implementations, normally commercial, one, uh, commercial ones, uh, so intact. So, so in other words, so I didn't want to so modify the network functions running uh, in the so MNO Fox environment. And, and by the way, so, so, so in, so in Endosan session, uh, so, K, so KDDA team took manual instrumentation approach to address uh, for non-HTTP 5GS communication, such as NJP or PFCP. These are not H, so on top of HTTP, so that's why uh, needed to special, yeah, yeah, atten, uh, yeah careful, mm, special cares. Yeah, okay, so, so, you, so use standard API or, or just, so, so just tracing to, uh, without modifications, cool, don't you think? But, but the reality was, <laughs> uh, so neither of them worked as I expected. The first one, free 5 gc network functions implementations do not return sufficient information actually. And also for the second one, uh, so, uh, 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 the implementation uh, we use is free 5 gc and this is written in Go language, okay? And the Go language automatic instrumentation has limitations, so, uh, so at least at this moment, limitations. And even the, and even the, H, so, so conventional, so HTTP uh, context propagation didn't work. <laughs> so this was the reality. And so that's why, uh, so actually, so I, so I used a, a kind of workaround resolution monitoring log files of network functions, and especially as, as the IP address 
assignment was so uh, handled by the SMF. So this time, so I focused on the SMF logs and extracted and extracted necessary information from them uh, in real time manner. And in order to do this, so I wrote a custom log parser of free 5 dc SMF, and also implemented uh, some logic to uh, e so export our SIP, the, the trace information to the, the, the aggregation, aggregation server. Okay. And here, the POC setup is like this. <coughs> Uh, yeah, uh, so, as, uh, so, uh, so as I stated, so regarding the 5G stack imp implementation, we used free 5GC, uh, free 5GC, and also the UE side, so we used UE Lansim, and also, uh, and UE Lansim uh, covers so, uh, base station, G node V2, okay? And, uh, and the base operating system is Ubuntu, Ubuntu, the latest LTS. And, and yeah, and regarding the, 5G network deployment. So, so I built so, so two slices per tracking area, and also at first, uh, so two tracking areas. And, uh, yeah, and also, <coughs> there, so, so in the networking world, there is uh, so some effort to deploy these network functions it's on top of Kubernetes, such as ONAP or Nephew. But at this time, for simplicity, uh, so I deploy these network functions uh, just using simple virtual machine deployment. So in other words, no containerization at the moment, okay. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and the procedure of the set, so setting up the UEs, uh, so, virtual, so virtual vehicles is like this. It's like this, but so simply, spe so, so simply speaking, uh, so free 5 gc and UE Lansim so community are provide so good, good doc so good documentation, and just by following them, uh, you so you also can can set up the the working uh, so 5 g network stacks, I think, and here so I'd like to share one so one tip, yeah, one tip. <coughs> So as I explained, the, the UE setup procedure can be divided into two phases, init registration and also PDU session establishment. And actually, uh, so UE Lansim has a CRI, so-called NR, NRC, <coughs> NRCRI. And, and, and by doing some trick of the configuration and also the command, we can, we can do separately uh, carry, uh, so we can separately carry out the two phases, init registration and also PDU uh, session establishment. Okay. So by the way, so so this time, so so I have so we have one more so uh, one more uh, a colleague of mine uh, from Toyota and, and there and there is so Kua san so she so she uh, so di, so she did uh, yeah this POC uh, she work, uh, uh, sorry, so she also worked on this POC and greatly contributed to the, this project. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. And here, okay. And so far, uh, so as I said, so so to do is get list of PD sessions, okay. Uh, and uh, and what I did, and yeah, and what I did is extract the necessary information from the SM SM log files, and. Uh, <laughs> And this is an example of the SM flow. And don't worry, I do not explain the line by line things. <laughs> so we, uh, so, uh, so this is so this is uh, so actual so actual example of the SM log, SM log, and and looks like complicated, but the, uh, so so actually it's uh, so it has so some structure, and there are some tips uh, to analyze these logs. For example, for example, so one log line can be divided into into multiple portion, and uh, yeah, yeah, and timestamp, log level, message, and category, or net, so, and source network functions. And additionally, additionally, some log lines have so PD session ID or the IMSI, IMSI or SP uh, identifier, or so uh, that we want. So so that I want. Okay. <laughs> And 
and uh, yeah, and by using these tips, so this is the very log lines that uh, so I uh, so uh, yeah, hmm? yeah focused on. So as you can see, uh, the first yellow line selected UPF is UPF one hyphen one. This is the identifier of the user plane function, user plane function, and also allocated PD address is the uh, is IP uh, assigned to the virtual smartphone or so. And as you can see uh, in, the, in the third line, uh, in the third yellow line, <laughs> so, so SUPI is, is in for the term, so IMSI, and also as I, so as I explained, so, so as I explained, so, so it's like phone number. So, so by collecting the, so, the, so these information items, we can, we can extract. Uh, what uh, the the vehicle identify uh, uh, the map of the <coughs> the trouble uh, sorry the map of the uh, Ukraine functions and also the affected UE information. Okay. And this <coughs> and this is also monitoring system pro the overview of the monitoring system prototype. Uh, uh, so as I explained, uh, so at first I tried so uh, so API based or trace based ones, but so actually, so I wrote logwatch so logwatch two uh, to so to find out so those kind of lines, and also <coughs> and also so so this tool uh, ships the the trace data to the trace aggregator here, and then and then on U plane failures, uh, so. So we can look up the trace aggregator and extract the suffered UEs. Uh, so uh, by uh, so, uh, so by using the the information of the U, uh, the UPF function uh, notified from the network operator side. Okay. And yeah, and this is uh, and this is uh, the sample log uh, sample log of so how this portion. Logwatch tool portion is working. Uh, <coughs> so if so, if some of you have experience to so to use Open Telemetry, uh, so Open Telemetry can export not uh, trace data not only to the remote trace server aggregator, but also the console too. And and uh, yeah, and actually, so Open Telemetry uh, yeah, log data is like this, and. Uh, in the yellow dot lines, you can find so SUPI and PD session ID and also UEIP and also selected UPA. Okay. And, and, and by looking at the selected UPF, and we can map the, uh, the trouble information from the MNO side and also PD session information too. And at and at the user side, to it, so connected to vehicle service side, we can use this information uh, at, at to carry out so necessary actions in proactively. Okay, this is the point. And the result is, uh, yeah. So I also did some experiment, and uh, so after re so so after receiving a UPI a UPA failure notification, uh, so I confirmed. Uh, so I confirmed it's possible to receive, uh, uh, sorry, so it's possible to uh, so extract the mapping information uh, to identify the suffered uh, vehicles, okay, uh, within a second. Uh, but it's uh, but it's obvious, and uh, yeah, yeah, and also norm so I think normally so so detecting a UPF failure, uh, so it would take rough, roughly one, so tens of so tens of seconds up to one minute or so. And uh, extraction, so data extraction is uh, so about so about seconds or so, okay. And yeah, and also so so as so as I explained, this is a workaround, and so so in this sense, there are some more limitations at the moment, and so so at the moment because of the the restriction uh, that are available from the free five GC and U Lansing implementation, at the moment we can't handle so G node B base station information. And also we, uh, and in the reality, so UPF, UPFs can be tiered. 
but、uh, right now, so right now, so I cannot handle this. Okay, at the moment. Ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and, yeah, and here is a list of work in progress and next steps. And first, so at first, so,、oh, so of course, so,、uh, so of course, I have to brush up design and implementation of the prototype.、Uh, yeah, for example, resolving restrictions or adding dashboard or, or something. <laughs> And, and, yeah, and second,、uh, this is a kind of middle term thing. Explore more sophisticated information retrieval way.、Uh, here I mean the, so, so using standard API or so. And third, <coughs> improving. So, so, as I, so as I explained, so I just、uh, did、so、experiment using small, so, so small amount of system. Uh, so, small number of vehicles or network functions, but so I have to、uh, carry out scalability uh, uh, yeah, consideration and also POC. And also, fourth, <laughs> so, in, so, so this could be a bit long term. So, after establishing,、uh, we, can do, so we can do this kind of the, the early yeah, yeah, error. Detecting or forecasting system, propose to telco equipment vendors or, or integrators or even people like KDDA folks. Okay. And in summary, so, so,、uh, so we proved it's possible to notify users, u i g r a n i t y u p l a i n failure information. And, and with this notification, so at least we can, we can take actions proactively if the, fa、mm, if the failure is ahead of the vehicles. And also, One merit is so without any modifications to the 3GPP protocol at the moment. Okay. <laughs> And also, in general, so, so as I worked through observability via distributed tracing, is quite useful and also important. And also, so as I explained, we used open source component. And during our POC works, we already、uh, reported and posting fixes. Uh, yeah, in other words, so contributed to the upstream community. So, like this,、uh, Toyota and also KDI uh, uh, will, keep,、uh, will keep work on,、uh, working on the open source community too. Yeah, thank you very much. That's it. Any questions? Uh, thank you for your talk. It is very impressive to see that uh, to uh, collect the information and then and, uh, just uh, collecting the information from the mobile network、mm. and just convert the raw data into in,、uh, useful information for、mm. debugging.、Mm. Uh, I would like to ask are there any、uh, security considerations during the, during the entire? System in, into like inside the vehicle and then also via the network? Right,、uh, right now. <laughs>、mm. Yeah, good point. Yeah, okay. So,、uh, right now, so, consider, so、uh, con yeah, considering security is a part of next step things, but、uh, so do please know so this system、uh, would be integrated or installed、so、inside the MNO system. So that's why, so basically, so I think it's, so it's, so the system is isolated from the outside and in this sense secure, I think. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but anyway, very good point, I think.、Mm. And the、uh, consideration would be so not to use、uh, so dangerous information for the, informa、uh, the context propagation or so. so, so, for, uh, so for, uh, as for example, so passing so IMSI phone number is, is a bit dangerous. So instead, so better to use、so、IMEI, so in my opinion. Like this, so,、uh, so step by step, so we, so we have to. So, improve the overall system, I think. So, like that way,、uh, we are working on security. Make sense? <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Or from Anderson, do you have any,、so、any additional comment? No? no. Okay, okay.、Yeah.
if you like, so if you like to ask me, so in Japanese, I will, so, uh, so I will restate your question in, in English and also answer. Yeah, and also I will be here for a while so after this session. Yeah, yeah, please catch me later. Thank you very much.